Whether you're designing logos, vector art, or business cards inside of Adobe Illustrator, knowing your keyboard shortcuts is key to a quick workflow. Welcome back designers, my name is Mike Pickett. This channel is all about helping you become a better vector logo and graphic designer. Now when I say workflow, I'm talking about the steps that you take pretty much on a daily basis or the path that you use to get to a certain result inside of Illustrator. It's understanding all the little nuances of the software that you're using that's gonna help you do things quicker so that instead of having to go search through the top menu to find where that certain function is, you know instinctively on the keyboard which keys to hit. So in this video, I'm actually gonna walk you through my top five keyboard shortcuts that I use on a regular basis. And then closer to the end of the video, I'm also gonna show you where you can go inside of Adobe Illustrator to set up your own keyboard shortcuts. And before we head over to Illustrator, if this is your first time here and you like the content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave. If you've been here before, maybe this is your second or third time, hit the subscribe button before you go as well. Don't forget to hit notifications so that you get reminded. I upload new content every Monday and Thursday. All right, designers, let's hop into Illustrator and I'll show you my keyboard shortcuts and how to make your own. All right, designer, so here we are in Adobe Illustrator again. I went ahead and opened up a file that I made a few months ago just so that I can show you how some of these keyboard shortcuts work. Now down in the bottom left corner, I'll be putting each of the keyboard shortcuts in both Windows and Mac. I work on a Mac, but I thought I'd put the shortcuts there for those of you that are on Windows. Normally, it's just a difference between Command and Control. So Command is normally the keyboard shortcut that you would use or the key that you would use on a Macintosh. Control is what you would use on a PC. There's also a difference between Alt and Option. Now, most of the keyboards that I've got for the Macs now, they all have Alt just up in the top left corner of the option key. All right, so the first keyboard shortcut that I use pretty much with every piece of work that I'm working on is Command-2. And what Command-2 does is it locks certain pieces of my artboard or certain pieces of the, the piece that I'm working on. So say, for example, I wanted to lock the background just so that if I'm selecting things, right, because a lot of times I want to come in and select just different portions of it, but I want to be able to drag over the whole thing. And all I want is the artwork. So what I'll do is I'll actually select the background and go Command-2, and then that's no longer selectable. So that way I can just highlight this and I can select the piece that I want. Now, alternatively, or there's kind of the flip side of that, once I'm done, I'll go Command-Alt-2, and that unlocks it for me. And you can do multiple items. So say I wanted to select um, the coffee pot base and this piece here and just kind of those gray pieces. I can select all of those and then Command-2 and it'll lock those pieces out for me. And that way I can select everything that isn't locked and do whatever I need to do. The other key is kind of tied to this one, which is my hide option. So I want to be able to hide certain things when I'm working on stuff. So let's say, for example, I want to hide my shadows or I want to hide everything that's, say, this color. So I'm just going to grab my magic wand. I'm going to select the one, get all the colors that are that, and I'm going to go Command-3. And now Command-3 has hidden just those colors. So that way I can move things around or do whatever I need to do without those colors being selected. And then once I'm done doing whatever I need to do and I want to unhide all of those blue pieces, again, option command three, and everything comes back into visibility. So another one that I use quite a bit is when I'm having to move things around my artboard. A lot of times I've got different objects that I'm working on at different points in the piece and I'll maybe need to move stuff around kind of back and forth on the artboard. There's more than just this one, but I find myself using this one the most. So if you can see right now, kind of this honeycomb pattern that I've got, or this tile pattern that I used for the backdrop on this piece, well, I want it right at the back. So what I'll do is I'll actually highlight both of these, and then I'm gonna go Shift Command and my left square bracket. And what that's done now is it's actually put that at the back of the artboard. Now the reason I grab both of those is that if I were to grab just this pattern and do that, it's gonna send it behind my background, right? So if I grab this shift command left square bracket, well now it's hidden behind the background, which I mean I could grab that 
and do the same thing to put it behind that last piece, but I just find it easier to grab both of them at the same time. Now the next one that I work with quite a bit is one that I'm gonna move this out of the way for. So I'm actually gonna command three on that. And I'm gonna pull just my outline piece, my initial work piece that I use into the artboard. And the reason I'm using this one is the next option is Command Y. And Command Y is our outline mode. And I use this to do a lot of alignment stuff uh, or to see kind of where my artwork is to see if I've got any, any overlap issues or gapping issues. And then I can zoom in on this. And this allows me to see where everything is lined up. So again, I've got cups, and I mean, there's there's little issues here that I might go in and clean up, where I'll grab those and just give them a nudge down. It's not necessarily an issue, but this can be helpful when you're looking for gaps in pieces. So you're looking for stuff that maybe has an overlap on it like this, and you want to get rid of that. So Command Y is one that I use quite often. And just Command Y again to get back out. And you'll see that everything here, this is all strokes, but it allows me again, that Command Y allows me to go in and just kind of see all of my different shapes without any kind of stroke or weight or colors or anything else. So I can make sure that everything is exactly the way that I want it to be. And my last keyboard shortcut that I use pretty much on every piece that I'm working on is the keyboard shortcut for the Shape Builder. So I'm going to grab all of this. I'm going to go up to Object, and I'm going to go Path, Outline, Stroke. And the keyboard shortcut for the Shape Builder is Shift-M. And now that I'm in Shape Builder mode, I can actually come in here, and I can start working on building my shapes out and getting things combined or erased or removed. All right, like I want to take this little notch out of the handle here. I can Alt click on that and then V gets me back over to just my selection tool and I'll sometimes swap back and forth out of these two to work on separate things, right? So now I wanna just grab these ones, Shift M and I'm back into my shape builder so that I can make some quick changes and remove pieces that I don't want showing or that I just need to get out of the design. All right, so now let's say that you find yourself in a situation where either a tool or a menu item that you use on a pretty consistent basis doesn't have a keyboard shortcut. There's a fix for that. If I go up to edit and I go down to keyboard shortcuts, you're gonna get this panel here, which is your keyboard shortcuts panel. And from inside of here, you can add your own keyboard shortcuts into the system. So if I hover over my group selection tool, you can see there's no parentheses behind this with a little character in it or a couple of characters. Whereas if I hover over the selection tool, I get that V in the parentheses. That's my keyboard shortcut for that tool. So here I wanna be able to add one because I use this tool quite often. Up in my object menu, if I go down to path, outline stroke, I use this quite often as well and you'll see that there isn't one there. Menu items require a command option. So you can't just do the letter J or the letter O any of your tools, you can just do a letter. Let's go to edit. I'm gonna go down to keyboard shortcuts and I'm gonna add my group selection tool. Now I know G is already taken, that's my gradient tool. And I use my gradients quite a bit, not as often as I do the group selection tool, but I do use it, so I'm gonna leave that. Now I know that shift G isn't taken. And I can tell that because there's nothing here. Nothing comes up giving me a warning. So let's. X that out, and if I go, say, V, well, the shortcut V was already used by the selection tool, it will take it, so it'll actually allow me to do it. I don't wanna do that, though. I'm gonna go undo, it's gonna put that back, and then again, I'm gonna go Shift G, and I'm gonna leave it at Shift G. Now, you'll notice that it's also changed my set. When I first came in here, it stayed at Illustrator Defaults, now it's gone to Custom. And the reason being is because I've made a change. So as soon as I click OK, it's gonna ask me to name this and save it. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and we're gonna type a name for the key set file. So I'm gonna say Mike's Custom, and hit OK. Now if I go back into my Edit Keyboard Shortcuts, and you'll see that the set that I'm on now is Mike's Custom, and I've got that Shift G that I can use to get to my Group Selection tool.
I know a lot of designers out there, uh, Von Glischka is one, and he has a lot of custom keyboard shortcuts for things that he does on a pretty consistent basis. So don't be afraid to go in and play with these. You can always go back and go to Illustrator defaults again, and it puts everything back to the way that it was, right? So there, my group selection tool is back to where it was. So you can reset. You don't have to worry about messing things up. So as you can see, there's keyboard shortcuts for so many different functions inside of Illustrator, but there's also stuff that we don't have keyboard shortcuts for. Now you know how you can make your own. So if there's that one tool or that one menu function that doesn't have a keyboard shortcut, but you find yourself using it over and over and over again, now you know how you can go in and make your own keyboard shortcut for it. I hope you found this useful, designers. Now, if you're new to Illustrator and you're just kind of getting used to all the various tools, I put a link up here in the top corner for the playlist that I have that's 20 Illustrator tools in 20 days. In some of the videos, I mentioned 30 Illustrator tools in 30 days because that was the original series. Just disregard that. It's 20 and 20, but I have more tool tutorials coming up in the future. All right, designers, I had to get back to work and get out there and design something, and I'll see you in the next video. I need to come up with a new Headfield guitar. I got a few already, but I think I gotta print a couple more out, get something else up on these walls. Soon, very soon.